Hi there and welcome to another workout for you to row along to. Now today's session is going to be a rather tough one and this is the start of the prep week for the 1k plan. Now don't worry, you don't have to be on the 1k plan to enjoy this workout. It's a good old tough workout that will help you work on your speed but also maintaining that speed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do two minutes at your 1k pace, then four minutes rest. Lovely. Then we're going to do one minute sprint, so faster than your 1k pace, four minutes rest. Ah, lovely. And then two minutes at your 1k pace again. Okay, so really when you think about this, this means that your intensity is up, but it's actually quite a short amount of time that you're gonna be working for. Now that is primarily aimed at these 1k plan people because we are on the last week of it. The intention is that at the very end of this week, you then do something like a 1k test or something else that kind of proves that your uh, experience through this plan has helped you go faster. But if you're not on the 1K plan or you actually get to the end of this and you're like, well, yeah, I know that was really quite a tough workout, but to be honest, I'd like to do a little bit more. Then what I suggest is you can either throw on like a 20 minute low intensity, 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 style row, or a little bit of self-promotion here. Um, I've just started up a new thing called a row along adventure where basically I'm creating row alongs, but instead of me bleating on about technique and motivation and performance and all that kind of stuff, basically I just tell you a story. So I've already made one of them as a test, which is that you're delivering a package from uh, one planet to the other end of the galaxy, okay? And you row and then I say, oh look, there's asteroids, you have to row faster. It's a little bit of fun. It's just a reason to work a little bit differently while you're on the rowing machine, keep you entertained. And it'll just cover 10 minutes of time and you'll go, all right, okay, that's a different way to do a row and it'll be over and done with. But that'll probably be something quite fun to tag on to the end of today's workout, which is going to be quite a tough one. And it'll just give you a little bit more and you'll go, wee, this is fun and, it's, and your day's good. Great, great. Unless, of course, you're doing the 1K plan, getting prepared for the test, in which case this is taper week. And so I don't really want you to be going too long, too intense. Um, you want to make sure your body's ready for that final surge. All right. Big log intro today, but I want to squeeze in that idea of tagging something on if you want to. So, because today is one of these tough sprinty workouts, we're going to do our 10 minute warm up where we start off a little bit slow and then we work up a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster, so that our body is ready for the main session. But before we can even get anywhere near that, we have to set up our machine. I know we're not even rowing yet. He's still talking. Oh man. So, on a concept two, that means going to drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, I've got a video up here on the channel that you may wish to watch. If you know how to set drag factor, but you don't know where to set it, then I recommend around about 130 and you can then adjust from there. If you know absolutely nothing about drag factor, then please just set the lever between four or five. Too low isn't the problem, too high is the problem. Next up, your monitor, if you can, please set it to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And finally, your foot straps, if you're able to set the height of your foot plates, then please set them to a point where you are able to come to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably, okay? Too high, that might be a little bit hard to get to. Too low, you might go scooting straight past. The last thing just to say is that if you're not in a concept two, when it comes to setting the resistance or the weight or whatever you've got, just make sure you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it to get it started, okay? Remember, you wanna get that power in from your legs. But I will talk about that in the warm up to come. So we're gonna start this off at run about 20 strokes per minute. And all I want you to think about is enough of a push from your legs that you can feel some power going into the machine and you can think about how you're connecting it. But I'll explain what I mean by that as we start, because we should really start rowing. This is going on for way too long. Here we go then, warm up in three, two, one, let's go. So right, so power, really it's almost like you were just standing up, okay? You're holding a couple of bags of shopping or something and you're standing up. That's how much of a push I want you to put from your feet into the machine for this first kind of two minutes of this warm up. And what that does is because you're not focusing too much on trying to hit a certain pace or you're, think you're not thinking about putting in a whole bunch of power, you can think about how that power is getting into the machine. And if you've never been told it before, then obviously you've not watched that many of my videos <laughs> because I always say, because it's the truth, that rowing is a pushing sport, that you push with your legs. That's how the power gets in, when you push your feet into the foot plates. But obviously, that's not gonna do much 
if you don't get that power connected to the handle. So that's about timing, about pushing your feet at the same time that the handle connects to whatever makes your machine go, go. So in my case, it means the chain connects to the flywheel. So I push with my feet. At the same time, I feel my hands connect to the machine. And if you have a forwards tilt over your hips and straight arms, that power goes from your legs into the machine without you losing that power. Right, so three strokes time. All I want you to do is increase the push from your legs, okay? Same stroke rate. So here we go. Just increase so that you're going two or three seconds faster than you were just rowing at. If you have a 2K training pace, I want you to be rowing at 2K plus 18. So this is around about five out of 10 effort. So you're still not working hard here, but you're starting to put more of a solid effort into the machine, okay? You're really thinking, all right, bit of power. You can hear your machine getting a bit louder. You can see your pace going a bit faster. And then a few more strokes. We're gonna slow down again by a couple of seconds. So one more. So same stroke rate, but just ease off by a couple of seconds. And this will be your recovery pace. So over the next six minutes, we're gonna gradually go a little bit faster for 30 seconds. And then we'll go back to this recovery pace. And we'll start off at 22 strokes a minute and work our way up to, I think 32. I'm trying to do the maths in my head here. <laughs> I think 32. Each time going a little bit faster. So we're gonna take four more here and then we'll go up to 22 strokes a minute and a little bit faster than when you were doing your power 20s. Okay, here we go. So, 22 strokes a minute. Push a little bit harder from your legs. And you should now be going a fair bit faster than your recovery pace, but still not stupidly fast. 2K plus 15, if you have a 2K training pace. Two more. One more. Okay, back to your recovery 20s. So just that nice, gentle pace. Because after all, today is about, or this part of today's row is about warming you up, not exhausting you. So that's why we recover for 30 seconds. Going up to 24 strokes a minute after this stroke. You ready? Here we go. So push harder with the legs. And that should give you a faster drive speed. And then if you have a slightly faster recovery to the next stroke, that should be enough to increase your stroke rate. One more and back to your recovery 20s. Oh, my watch is shouting at me. Yes, I'm rowing. Latest Apple update seems to have put my sound back on my watch. Okay, got to 26 next, and another two or three seconds quicker than before. You ready? Here we go. So push 
hard over the legs and combination of that push putting in more power and the faster stroke rate should mean that your speed is slightly faster for these 26 strokes per minute last one here back to your recovery 20s so your heart rate and breathing will climb through these 30 seconds and then recover a little bit for the well for these 30 second recoveries this is all warming you up ready for today's main session two more one more okay 28 strokes a minute a little bit faster and if you're counting you're aiming for 2k plus 5 if you have a 2k training pace Woo. hot one today two more one more back to your recovery 20s oh Ooh, I need a drink all this talking my throat's gone dry okay up to 30 strokes a minute for the next one in 3 2 1 here we go then one stroke every 2 seconds and if you're struggling to get the rate up remember get that handle away from your body nice and smooth but quickly in out in out don't hold it into your body two more one more okay so we've got one more to do we're going up to 32 strokes a minute and you're going to roll this at your 2k average 500 meter pace that's taking your 2k time trial divided by four that's the pace you're going to roll this at one more here we go so 32 strokes a minute my 2k average is 145 so I want to see 145 or faster on my monitor 144 will do very nice just a few more strokes two more last one and let's paddle home for the next 30 now remember if you feel that you need more of a warm up before today's main session then keep on rowing I will spend a couple of minutes recapping what we're doing but if you want to pause the video last stroke if you want to pause the video and keep on warming up for a couple of minutes and then restart the video then please do otherwise have a quick drink keep on moving up and down the rail and I'll explain one more time what we're doing today so in case you wonder there's a reason that I always have this break after the warm-up Firstly, it's to <laughs> literally program the session into my monitor. But the other one is just to give your ATP a chance to rebuild into your muscles. That's like the initial power that you get. It's like the free, it's like, you know, the cream at the top of a pint of milk. That's like free power that you get. Um, and so by doing a warm up and then waiting a couple of minutes, that gives your muscles a chance to recharge that ATP. And often what happens after a good warm up is it doesn't only recharge you get a little bit more as well because your body says hang on what's going on here that might happen again i'm going to have to have more energy available and so that should take care of really kind of the first 30 seconds to a minute of the row is about to happen or your 1k or your 2k or whatever 
Round about, like I say, that not everyone's different, but kind of the first, certainly the first 30 seconds, the power that you're getting is going to be coming from that ATP. Maybe 30 seconds is a bit much when thinking about it. It could be like 10 seconds. But you get what I mean? You get free power, that excitement power. That's why you see loads of people sprinting the start of a 2K for the first few strokes, because that's the free power that they get. And then they settle, down, settle into their tempo row for that race. Now, that said, I don't want you to start this way for this two minute row. I want you just to go straight into your pace and rate. I don't want you to sprint the start for the first five strokes and then slow right down and then kind of cheat your average. I want you to get to that 1k pace as quick as possible and then maintain it through this first two minute interval, okay? I want you to start at that pace and try and hold on all the way to the end. If you do that sprint, and then tail off, there's a chance that you're gonna really fade by the end. And that's not the point of today's row. To, the point of today's row is to get up to pace and to hold pace, to expose yourself, to embrace the discomfort, okay? Um, that's the point of this. And that's why we're doing it with the two minutes, the one minute and the two minutes, because I haven't said, today's session is two minutes at your 1K pace, followed by a four minute rest, then one minute sprint, followed by four minutes rest, followed by two minutes back at that 1K pace again. So two minutes, one minute, two minutes, and you're done. Only five minutes worth of rowing, but if you hit this hard enough, it's gonna be a tough one, okay? And like I say, if you want to then tag on something at the end, if you're not trying to taper for a big event at the end of the week, by all means do. Otherwise, just stick to this five minutes. Let your body recharge fully for when you do that 1K test or whatever at the end of the week, okay? Right, I have likely flanneled enough for us all to have recovered. Have a quick drink. you don't want your mouth to go dry a minute into this and then that causes you to go oh i'm uncomfortable and remember embrace the discomfort okay when that point when your brain starts to say this is getting a bit tiring let's back off through the practice of the rest of this plan you know you don't need to okay it's only two minutes you can hold that pace you then get a recovery period right let's see how much i'm going to talk during this one i'm not entirely too sure so apologies if this is more of a <laughs> I would watch and row rather than listen to me. Are you ready then? So two minutes at your 1K pace and stroke rate in three, two, one, go. <clears throat> so get right up there. Powerful pushes from your legs. Depending on your stroke rate, this is likely to be between 60 and 70 strokes which isn't much when you think about it but just make sure every one of them counts push with the legs Arms straight. Forwards, tilt. We're halfway. Don't pull until the back. Keep the rate up. Thirty seconds. Push. There we go. I started valiantly trying to talk to you, but that soon dropped off. So there we go. I didn't 
want to waste any more time in the intro telling you the pace I was aiming for, but the fastest I've managed when trying to hold my 1k pace effort has been around about 139 in this plan so far. So I was looking for at least 139 pace for that opening two minutes. And I'm pleased to say I managed an average of 138.7 for that first interval. So, although the session last in week four that was rowing faster, the 1K pace was faster than that. I think it was like 136 was my average. That's not the point of that opening interval. The point of that one is just to get up there and to hold it. And it's definitely a bit of a scare to the system where you do it and you're like, whoa. So sometimes it can be an evidence of not being fully warmed up when you can go, whoa, hang on, this is getting a bit much, but then you just have to hold on. I definitely hit a dip. I think with about 40 seconds to go, I looked up and saw that my pace was down at 140. So I'd obviously just dipped. So I just decided to reconcentrate. Have a drink, there's two minutes to go. To stop talking to you for a start. And then concentrate on well, that time it was just about the push with the feet. Just thinking, I just don't think I was putting in the effort, the power that was needed to hold me up at pace. I kind of backed off a little bit. And so then when I started to think push with the feet, I saw my pace go back up to that kind of 139-ish pace. So it's always, if you see yourself dripping off, don't just accept it. Don't say, oh, this must be because I'm getting tired. Ooh, at this point, do rock on your seat if you've got, my glutes are quite sore after that opening one. Don't just kind of go, ah, oh, I'm obviously fading. Think, is it a technique thing? Have I changed anything? Am I suddenly missing the connection at the front? Am I not pushing hard enough with the legs? Am I swinging too soon with the back? Am I pulling too early with the hands? All that kind of stuff. And even if you go through that checklist as you're rowing, See, by the time you've gone through like 10 different points, like posture, your recovery, all that stuff, um, or your return of the stroke, I mean, by the time you've gone through all that, at least 20 seconds has passed <laughs> and you're hopefully covered another like 100 meters or so in your, your race and maybe things have turned around, you're going fast enough again and you're feeling okay. Right, we've got 25 seconds to go. Remember, it's a one minute next faster than that interval just was, okay? That's important. It's only one minute. If you wanna do some light rowing to get the flywheel moving, start now. But make sure to only put the full effort in when I say go. That was a quick four minutes, eh? Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So really, try to get the power in. If you can avoid going too high a stroke rate, that's better. You want this to be about power. Okay, halfway. Push with those legs. Hang off the handle with straight arms. 15 seconds. Last one. One, 35. The four minutes flies by, doesn't it? So you may be 
or in the last rest period, have thought four minutes is quite long, but well, if you think four minutes is too much recovery time, then I'm going to guess that you're not putting in 10 out of 10 effort here, whether that's because you're just not, that you're only really doing about 8 out of 10, not quite hitting that 1k pace or faster in that one, or maybe your technique just doesn't let you. If you are swinging, if you come into the front and then you open up too early, so even before you connect to the handle with that leg push, if you're already leading backwards, it's really hard to get that full power in there and to actually be able to work at that intensity because all you're really left doing is like half a leg pull, sorry, half a leg push and then that arm pull at the back, which is gonna be tiring, but trust me, if you can push from the front, lay a full leg drive in there and see the monitor go really fast, it's screaming at you, you put in so much power, then as a result, you go faster, but you tire out. But not, you're not prematurely tiring, tiring yourself out. The point is that you're putting in all that effort in order to get into the kind of state that I was in <laughs> or still am in. So it's not like, oh, I've put in all that effort and now I'm really tired. I didn't get to the end of the interval or, or whatever. It's about the reward, let's say, for putting in all that effort and being that level of exhaustion at the end of that one minute. Remember, there's only one minute of effort and I was completely <laughs> at the end. But the reward for all that effort was that I was rowing that one minute at 135 pace, which is right up there, kind of closer to where I want to be rowing nowadays for my 1K full row, not just a one minute sprint. But I also take that that one minute was a good seven seconds faster than any of the intervals that I managed to row at the very beginning of this plan. In week one, session one, that was one minute on, one minute off eight times. My average was like 142 and a half, and the fastest I managed was like 142 maybe, uh, or maybe 141. But that was still, even at 141, that was still six seconds faster than any of those intervals. So it shows how much, how far I've come in only four weeks worth of training on this plan. Okay, 30 seconds to go. Let's get our mind back in the game for the next two minutes. In 20 seconds, get ready if you want to do some light rowing. Let's get the flywheel moving. Start now and time it right so that when I say go, you go. 10 seconds, two minutes, 1K pace. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. I try to just settle to your 1K pace. You don't want to start fast, you want to end fast. Hit a rhythm. Push with your legs. A minute to go.
increase the power hold stroke rate now raise the rate and power three two one oh Oh, 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 help, oh, mummy, oh, hang on, Uh, more oh, vain person <laughs> would probably edit this part out. Oh man, the fact is, those two minute intervals were round about but it's a little bit less than what two thirds of my 1K would be, my pace, just our duration, I can't speak. So it'd probably take me about 312, 314 right now for a 1K. So that was two minutes. So just how I say 60% time-wise, but at that pace, now usually in a 1K race, I do my three minutes, 10, whatever, and then I'm on the floor done afterwards. So even if you just factor in the four minutes there, the two times two minutes up at that pace, then that's a lot of hard work. But then when you throw in that one minute sprint faster in between, ah. Oh. So that was about creating this discomfort that you are going to go through if you hit your 1K or whatever at the pace you're meant to, okay? and about pushing through. Trust me, when I got 30 seconds into, don't worry, I'm not ignoring you, I'm just loading up a three minute cooldown. When I got 30 seconds into that interval just then, everything was saying, oh man, what have you done? Stop. I was even kind of thinking, oh, I wonder if I could just replay the first one. Would anyone, would anyone know? But fortunately, because I do this all in our zone, yes, they would, because you'd see it, you'd look at the results and go, hang on. His third interval was 145, yet on the screen. And the average that came out just then was only 138.2. So only half a second average faster than the first two minutes. But my body was in a point of exhaustion by then. So to actually have gone faster is great news. And it's probably thanks to the last 30 second sprint of increasing power with 30 seconds to go and then increasing stroke rate with 15, se with 15 seconds to go. Right. Hopefully you have settled enough like me to get into a three minute cool down. Now I'm going to do this again where we just start around about 20 strokes a minute at a 2k plus 30 pace, about 5 out of 10 effort, then gradually slow down. Uh, and then I'm going to do the single leg, arms only, uh, body only, whatever stuff, legs only, sorry. Um, but you can of course just do the whole three minutes as a cool down. You don't have to stop just because I am. So here we go then. 20 strokes a minute, three minute cool down in three, two, one. Let's go. Oh. So like I say, there's a good chance that by the time I've finished this cool down and we go through the stretching period, you'll be like, you know what? I've recovered enough now. I could do some more exercise, in which case, if you want to load up that 20 minute low intensity row or load up one of my row along adventure rows and just have some fun rowing along to me while I tell you a story about delivering a package through space. <laughs> but if you are planning on doing a 1K at the end of the week, I suggest not doing any more. Right, three, 
two, one. Let's take one foot out, put it on the ground. Now I made a video, a how-to video, how to get out the foot straps quickly. So if you are mesmerized by how quickly I got out of the foot strap just then, then I recommend checking out that video. I'm gonna try and make a whole bunch of short how-to videos. Okay, that's one here. Take this foot out. Make the other one back in and then continue rowing. So just one leg in, lets you focus on that push, lets you open your hips up a little bit. Keeps the intensity down as well. It's quite handy for a cool down. Okay, three more here, and then we'll put both feet back in. One more. So let's put both feet back in. Don't have to worry about strapping them, but just roll with your back and arms. So connect with your back first. So as you swing your back, you should feel the handle connect to the machine, and then pull with your arms. Feel that connection of your back first, then arms. Then swing, then sorry, arms away, and then swing forwards. One more here. And then as we roll to the front of the machine, tighten your straps. Have a forwards tilt and straight arms and just press lightly out the front with your legs. Because I want you to hold this forwards tilt and straight arms. This is just about teaching you to be in this position as you drive. So it's not about the power from your legs. It's about a good posture, forwards tilt, straight arms and connecting to the machine. One more. Oh. Oh. Now after today's row, I feel like somebody has just stuffed a towel in my mouth and taken it back out. My mouth is so dry. So I'm gonna have a quick drink before we get into stretching. So, stretching. If you don't have time, then I recommend at least stretching your quads or your hamstrings at one point, not in the shower, because I don't want you to slip, fall over and hurt yourself. That would be bad. Or, Stretchy John has just appeared in the top corner of the screen. You can follow him for some guided stretching, or you can follow me on the rowing machine, and I'll take you through stretches that I do if you don't have a stretching mat or anything nearby. So, feet back into the straps, which are still loose after the row you just did. Hands up in the air, and then fold forwards. So you fold your upper body down towards your legs, you don't have to come down too far, you just have to go down far enough that you feel that stretch going into your hamstrings. It's funny, so today is a Tuesday. Uh, yesterday I had a rest day. Um, uh, and through the weekend, I didn't do any stretching after any of the workouts I did. And so today I can really feel my hamstrings have tightened right up. Which is why stretching is important. Let's do glutes next. Okay, so one leg up on the rail, your other leg comes over your knee, pull this knee across your body, hold it in place with your other arm, I'm gonna, I've done that wrong way around, I'm looking away from you again, sorry, and then rotate into that glute that is um, up on the seat. Well, both of your glutes are up on the seat, but you get what I mean, the one with the bent leg is the glute that you're stretching right now. And as you rotate in, kind of round and down into that glute, you should feel it gets a stretch, but you can adjust how much of a pull across your body the leg gets or how high your other foot is against the crook of your knee. Let's swap legs, so leg comes over, pull that one across, hold it in place, and then rotate downwards, holding onto the back of the machine to stop me falling off. Because <laughs> you do see, every now and then I see like various either videos or even, I think it was this month's copy of Men's Health, had a thing where you do press-ups holding on to the seat. Um, so it's all very good doing things. What The worst one is when you kind of do hands on the ground behind, feet on the seat, and then you can put your feet away from you and then bring them, draw them up again. The problem with that is that it's really easy to lose control of the seat. Suddenly, like on the press-ups one, it spins away from you and you face plant into the rail or your feet go away and suddenly you're left with a rail right between your legs, which 
hurts no matter what gender you are. <laughs> so uh, next up, quads. So stand up. I'm gonna, oh yeah, hang on. I'll come back to you. Uh, just rest my hand on the monitor so I don't fall over. Flick my heel up, hold it against my backside. And then I have a straight line from my shoulder down through my hips into my knee. And then I kind of adjust how much of a pull I put on that foot into my backside. Or make sure my posture's straight. Make sure I've actually got that straight line between my shoulder, my hips and my knee. And that I'm not kind of jutting something out strangely. And that should give you a nice stretch into your quads. Certainly is for me. I'll try and do this without falling over. <laughs> Ooh. 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 You wouldn't want to see me on a tightrope, would you? Okay, I've just changed legs in case you didn't quite understand what was going on there. But I was doing walking lunges with a 20 kilogram sandbag on, what day was it? Sunday? S Saturday, Sunday, I think. Um, and I can still feel right in my quads, right, there's like a golf ball right in the top of my quad. Because again, I didn't stretch properly afterwards. As me doing my high rocks training stuff. Sure, it's good for me. <laughs> right, hip flexors. I'm gonna do, what was this one? I'm gonna do the one with my knee on the ground. So one foot is on the ground, but your knee is up. So it's above your ankle, your back leg, the knee's on the ground uh, and uh, your, the angle's at 90 degrees. And all you're doing is pushing this hip forwards and bringing this knee over the front of your foot, but still trying to keep a good posture, okay? So I'm not collapsing down keeping a nice posture as I push forwards. And if you just get, once you get it right, you get it right by pushing that hip forwards, you get a really nice stretch right down kind of that top section of your hips um, to stretch your oh, hip flexor. <laughs> ah, that was a manly noise, wasn't it? As I almost fell down. <laughs> Swap legs. Now, of course, if you don't have same thing again, so push that hip forwards. If you don't have a stretching mat or something to rest your back knee on, you can just do this as a lunge onto the front leg and lift the back knee kind of like a couple of inches off the ground. Um, I prefer this way. I feel I get a much better, much more solid stretch into my hip flexor when I'm down on the ground like this. But if you've got like a, if the ground is filled with crushed glass and things and you don't really want to put your knee on the ground, then any stretch is better than no stretch or a lacerated knee. <laughs> so there we go. That's the hip flexors done. Oh. Uh, let's do uh, forearms next. And I'm going to do this from the side for this one because I normally do it just facing you. But put your hands in front of your body, put them together as though you're praying, oh. and then push them together and then bring your hands down so that you created like a right angle between your fingers and your forearm. Um, your fingers are still both up in the air. And then that should give you a nice little stretch into the underside of your forearms. Um, which again, maybe in today's role because of that one minute sprint and things, your forearms probably would have got quite a lot of use out of them, but they shouldn't feel that bad. And certainly if you've just been doing a 30 minute row or something, your forearms shouldn't really feel sore at all. Same with shoulders. I'll do the shoulders next. So hand straight, straight in front of you, bring it across your body, then hold it in place and then just rotate again against that shoulder or however it feels that you get stretched right into that shoulder, into your kind of, kind of the delts of your shoulder. Because again, your shoulders are really there to hang off the handle rather than it being that you're generating power from the, through the entire stroke with your shoulders. So if your shoulders end up really sore at the end of a row, let's swap arms, then chances are you're using them way too much. And I've, I'll quickly show before we get into the stretch in the biceps, um, I'll quickly show you kind of what can be causing that. I'll do it really quick because I don't want to waste too much time for the stretch. But if you've got your shoulders kind of set back as you're rowing, even if you've got that forwards tilt, if you're kind of set back and you're almost like your shoulder blades are already kind of squeezed together, then as you do, everything is kind of tense and tight and, and rigid and uh, up here. Whereas if you just let your shoulders come forward, see the difference between kind of that squeezed and then forwards, now suddenly they're loose, so tight or loose. But I'm also getting a whole bunch more length out of the stroke by coming forwards. But it also means I get this straight line of tendons and sinew and stuff that lets the power go through and my shoulders don't come into play. All right, just do biceps, put your hands behind you as though you're flying and rotate your thumbs outwards. Okay, and that should lengthen the long head of your bicep. 
does compress your triceps a little bit or does mine, so that's why I do my triceps last. So yeah, so that's why if you end up, especially on longer rows, if you end up with really sore shoulders, then there's a chance you're just, you're not hanging off your shoulders that way I was saying about by, by kind of sending them outwards and, and giving your tendons and your sinew and your bones and whatever the, the option to transfer the force. If you're, if everything's kind of grabbing against the handle, um, then that's what causes the soreness and also what can um, cause problems with your pace as well because that grabbing against it soaks up power. Right, triceps. So, get one hand, put it up in the air, send it down to the back of your spine so your elbow's kind of pointing to the sky. Then use your other hand to really make sure your elbow's pointing to the sky. So help it back, push it back. Your hand should go a tiny little bit further down um, your spine. Ideally, you want to be able to get this hand, the other hand up behind and touch your fingers. Even more ideally, you want to be able to actually interlock fingers, like hook them together and then be able to uh, pull, use that hand rather than pushing it back, you're kind of pulling it down. But my shoulder flexibility is rubbish. I'm going to come to you in a minute. Other arm. So my watch is shouting at me with like a, have you stopped rowing? You don't seem to have been rowing for the past nine minutes. What's going on? <laughs> and that's because I haven't been. <laughs> Yeah, I would have, I always like to, I'll wait until I've does, done this second tricep and then we'll go a quick rundown. Because it wasn't that long a row, like I say, it was a 10 minute warm up, followed by five minutes worth of intensity with eight minutes rest in between, and then the cool down. So not that much rowing. So I'd be interested to see what. So my watch says 276 calories, but it also thinks that that's like 45 minutes worth of rowing effort. Even though my heart rate's kind of been down, it'll still think that I've been rowing for. So I doubt that that was 276 calories, active calories as well. It's saying in total 352, um, but I doubt that. I think that's just a little bit of a miscount because it's been added. That's like 10 minutes since we stopped the cool down now. Um, crikey, sorry about that. That was quite a long stretching session. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it's kind of misread that wrong. I do think that because of that heart rate kind of over those uh, intense periods that there's a, there's a little bit of an afterburn that's gonna happen from today's session where you'll have boosted your system and it'll spend a while to recover and still be burning energy while it's kind of recovering things. So there is an added burn here, but I don't think it's anywhere near that kind of 250. So um, if you are looking at calories, then do always kind of try and pay attention to what your tracker is saying. So. Uh, like I say, even though I could, I could easily look at that one and go, hey, it actually says total calories across that entire thing was 357. I'm going to eat a cookie. That'd be a bad idea because I don't think I have. I think I'd probably say in total, maybe about 150, 200 calories burnt. I mean, 10 minute warm up, that's going to be taken care of quite a lot. So maybe, um, maybe in total, yeah, maybe that 200. Maybe it's only like around about 80 wrong for the active calories, but I'd still be, wouldn't really be that faithful to that one. So anyway, there we go. So. Right, that was week five, session one. I'm a day out of joint for this week, basically because I took Monday off. Um, I just didn't feel like the day that I should be going out and doing this kind of a session on. So I apologize that we are one day out of sorts on this plan. If you've been doing this like as I've been making it, then I apologize because I'll probably throw you out of kilter. Certainly know that Chris Barrow had done this one um, and so he's now playing catch up and he'll probably kind of run out of time. However, how this week is going to go for the 1K plan, folks, anyway, is it's going to be three sessions, then a rest day, and then some kind of a how did I get on across the plan test, whether that's a one kilometer or I'll say now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do week one, session one again. I've already brought it up in today's row as to a reference to how I look, how I feel I've improved. So I think that's a really good baseline, week one, session one, um, all the way back then that eight times one minute, well, one minute rest in between. So I'm going to do that as my end of plan test, okay, to see how I got on to see what the numbers difference is. If you're training for a 1K, then do a 1K, okay? Don't follow me blindly, although the video is going to be me doing the eight times one minute. You just sit down, strap in and do a 1K, okay? And just try and get everything that you can out of it. Um, that's the important thing for the end of this week. But just to explain, there's only going to be three main sessions, then a rest day to, to make sure you're prepared for it. And then it's going to be whatever your test is going to be, okay? So then it will kind of fall in line. But unfortunately for people like Chris that's already started this, um, you're going to be slightly, I'm afraid, chasing my workouts. Sorry. There we go. So... I hope you enjoyed it. Um, maybe you just have been just rowing away for the past 10 minutes while I've been stretching and things anyway. And so you're like, oh, is he ever gonna finish? So I'm about to finish. Um, 
Now, I do, for the hashtag, I'm going to still shamelessly promote this extra podcast. So, just to explain, so I'm making videos of this uh, Row Along Adventure series I was talking about. So there will be, all the videos are going to come up, there's going to be a playlist of a Row Along Adventure. Uh, but I'm also making podcast versions, which for the time being, I am putting into my main Row Along podcast. Okay, so if you didn't know, I also release all of these rows as a podcast for you just to listen to in the gym and whatever. But I've also started up a separate podcast called A Row Along Adventure that I'm just waiting for like um, Apple Podcasts and whatever to pick up. Um, so I'm going to keep putting these, putting these ones into the Row Along Adventure ones. I'm going to go into the main Row Along podcasts, but they will eventually just be in um, a Row Along Adventure podcast thing. So hopefully, I'm really hoping that people, it's, it's going to be more aimed at like gym users and uh, new rowers and actually kids people who just need some kind of a focus to keep them rowing and to tell them to row a little faster and a little easier, but they don't really need someone to tell them to be up uh, row swinging from one o'clock to 11 o'clock the whole time and hey, this is the motivation to try hard. They just need something to keep them company for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And that's why it's like, hey, we're lifting off and we're traveling to the other side of the galaxy. So that's the point of, of those ones. So if you just want a little bit of a distraction, check it out. I've made one so far. This is uh, mid-September 2022. So, um, if you are way past this when you listen, listen to this, then do check out the playlist on YouTube or the podcast and you'll see if I've made any more. And hey, maybe this will be <laughs> what releases me from a world of uh, my day job. Unlikely. But yeah, so as such, there's a point behind this. The hashtag to say that you got this far through this workout is, the hashtag is a roll along adventure. Okay? Just because that, that way I know you got this far. So that was us, week five, session one. I've done all my little caveats. I've apologized. I've really promoted my Rolog adventure idea and I've explained what we're doing in this week. So I will let you go because seriously, you're going to have a queue of people behind you if you're a rowing machine, if you're in a gym right now, going, what's it, what? Hey, what? So please look after yourselves. I will see you in one of my many other videos. Until then, take care, be well. Bye-bye.